that is old school soul track from royalty free music some instrumentals this is featuring who is this featuring number one soul music hello this is Tin for always reading or Felicia just chilling on a Wednesday afternoon. I'm trying to add to my Tin Fro shorts. I didn't realize that one of my videos of Karen tripping, um, No More Tears, went almost kind of went viral with 37,000 views and some weird comments. Um, I found it interesting because I was just responding um, to something external and something that meant a lot to me. With that said, I am entering in this um, stage of mindfulness and grief. I have not posted anything to anywhere in over two weeks, two and a half weeks until I um, had to come and post something, um, late. Um, I recorded my podcast, I believe a compilation of it and had submitted it for, uh, publishing back on March 24th or 25th, but then late on March 25th, after I had returned from picking up groceries, my sister called me and, told me about my father dying um and it's no shade I'll put in the either my podcast notes as well as in my um notes for this shorts uh, my father was actually murdered I can't I'm trying to get my mind around it it's been like a horrible horrible uh worst episode ever of law in order over the past two weeks i had to figure out very rapidly because gas is thousand dollars a gallon how i was going to get home thankfully i have a id4 an all-electric car by volkswagen i learned by um i simply learned by um, elimination, uh, where I could charge. Um, I found out that if I put in my beginning location and then where I was ending, that I could actually look up on Google, all of the places from Electrify America to charge point that had the rapid and Evgo, which is more prominent in Hampton roads where I could actually charge up. But I had to figure it out really rapidly. I ended up not leaving until like Sunday, uh, late Sunday morning, and it took over like 20 hours for me to get there. Um, it was a lot, y'all. And I'm still processing it because in, as far as my father and my lack of relationship is concerned, we were estranged, meaning I hadn't spoken to him since maybe 2015 or 2016 um, for a variety of reasons. But going back even prior to that, um, and it wasn't because I borrowed money from him. Um, it was, he was trying to entice me. Prior to that, he tried to get me to pay off his debt as far as a scam. <laughs> I have to look at financial stuff because that's how families fall apart mostly through finances, but it's because I'm very strong will. I have been a physician for 15 years by that point, major in the military, and I wasn't really used to anybody talking to me like they were crazy. And I knew that for my own personal uh, mental health, that I could not and would not subject myself to anyone coming at me left. No comments on my weight, my appearance, if you have no already nickel in that dime. And I don't have to impress you or anyone like you. 
and that's and I had to put them in that core that category where again I don't have to talk to you and family means uh, would mean so much to me more to me if I did not have to worry about the psychological detritus that you get dumped on every day so when my sister calls me screaming and hollering that he has been murdered um, I have to unpack that how do you deal with that nobody deserves that but dealing with it, I am, and it's a step and a day-by-day -day process. Um, that's why this mindfulness journey I am on, even though I had no idea what the ham sandwich that was, but it appears that mindfulness and being mindful is key to healing and dealing with grief. Who knew? A lot of this stuff is so feathery strokey to me, meaning I don't, I, I really don't understand it all. I really, I really have no idea how to apply it, but I find it helpful. I don't know if that makes any sense. But so I had to look up what the ham sandwich is mindful. First, it's a type of meditation in which you focus on being aware of what you're sensing and feeling in the moment without interpretation or judgment. In some places, there are seven key attitudes of mindfulness um, and getting started and uh, what exactly it is. But that awareness of your thoughts and feelings and body sensations and surrounding environment without judgment, that helps you realize that you are grieving but it also no shade no judgment and I think being mindful or a mindful person is in direct contradiction when you live in a very judgmental world um, I say that I I usually tell people that I'm in my head a lot um, and I found out that You can be in your head and and being a mindful person, you can still be in your head because you have to be cognizant of your thoughts. No matter if they're repetitive and maladaptive, you have to be able to work those out with a therapist. So in addition to figuring out how I was going to get back, to Virginia, which I had not been to in years. Actually, I had not been to Virginia since, it's been three years, since um, August of 2019. And I'm only, I'm probably one of the only people that is happy with the pandemic because I've used that as an excuse not to go to Virginia at all. And I'll deal with that some of my feelings uh, mixed while I was there, but the the impact of having to be told and being in my head, um, I am very cognizant of my feelings. One of the, it vacillates between anger and grief. My father was murdered by a person that he thought of as a son. Um, no relation, never adopted him. He lived in my my mother's house uh, probably for about 10, 12 years until his mother and he reconnected with his biological father. Who am I talking about? I'm talking about Cola Bill the Fourth. This fool basically wanted and was on tap of being a black serial killer. And I, of all the uh, serial killer uh, shows that I've watched, he's the most stupid. I'm just gonna have to put go on record to say that. He is the product of a killer, a murderer himself. When he reconnected with his father, his father was actually on the run because he had killed his wife. 
he is the product of, I think, of an affair. Um, and he also got, was almost killed his own mother. I don't know if he was six months old or whatever, but it was before uh, his mother uh, hooked up with my father. I can truly tell you that my feelings for both of them, I have no feelings. I don't care. I think both of them are trash and they need to burn in hell. And being mindful, I'm mindful that those feelings are actually okay. I'm not going to act on it because vengeance is not mine. It is the Lord's. And I'm okay with that too. I'm not trying to catch a case for these motherfuckers. I'm just saying. Oh, yeah, warning. There's a lot of cussing in this episode. I'm going to have to mark it explicit because I just can't help myself. And I don't know how to act. And I've had a martini. So go figure. Anyways. He actually, this fool, Cola, Cola the Third, killed his wife, hooked up with this fool's mama, had Cola, lived in the house on and off for the past several years, um, even though the father got caught up, had that murder charge, who he's now serving a life sentence for um, in Maryland because he killed his wife in Maryland. Um had been was out actually on parole for good behavior of all things kills his ex-girlfriend and the dog watches the mother uh on the security cameras after he does the deed at some point goes to my father's house shoots him robs him with and uses his own truck to remove items that he had stolen from the house. His partner was make it was quote unquote disrespected him, kills him. Before that goes back to the girlfriend's house and sets it on fire. Um his mother then calls for a um welfare check on my father okay because she had known what her son was up to and had did but this fool had killed the cousin the partner by then they hold up in a airbnb supposedly holding the girlfriend of the cousin he had just killed hostage but they going shopping splitting up the money that was found in, that he stole from my father between the mother and the girl, the uh, baby's mama. Um, they tracking the quote unquote hostage by her cell phone um, to this Airbnb in Hampton and then raids it and locks these fools up. If they hadn't jacked him up and caught him, he would have continued to kill. I think he had a hit list, and I think his my father's blood relatives and children were on it. I think he knew he had nothing to lose, and I think he was also high as hell when he gave both of those interviews. I don't want to give any credibility um, to anything that he said during those interviews because he basically confess to three separate murders. And I'm okay with not revisiting that. I had to rewatch it again to get the timestamps because I had to say, tell these things to the state farm insurance agent, but I did not, I did not want, I don't want to watch that again. And I did not need or want my sister or I have to identify his body because decomposition has set in um, and he was missing a part of his face. I wanted to remember the Clifton Robert Baxter that was in his uh, Vietnam era um, army uniform. I wanted to remember the Jerry Curl wearing leather jacket wielding shine that everybody know from his DJ days. 
Never did I thought that I would have to uh, pay for his cremation, come up with the playlist for his uh, memorial service. Um, Al Green and Marvin Gaye and Lenny Williams heavy. I'll share the link to the playlist also in this episode notes, but how I'm dealing with it is remembering being mindful that although we were estranged, I also recognize he had some good parts, although I didn't see them as much. I don't think we ever had a real relationship um, as I was an adult. He never got to know Tenfro. I don't think he had access um, to my blog or any social media. He chose, maybe he chose, I don't know, maybe he chose an image of me as a child and he never learned to grow beyond that. And I never had kids. I never married. So he never walked me down the aisle. And I doesn't have any grandkids by me. Too bad, so sad. But what I do know is I am going to choose to deal with all these unanswered questions about what's next. I'm also going to be okay, but I'm going to work through, and I can't stay angry about the chaos all of this has brought into my life. For example, I'm so furious that my father let this fool bamboozle him, let this fool into his house, had access to him, and he got blown away by him. He probably shot, taught this fool how to shoot. And he may have used his own gun against him. That makes me angry. What about the hardcore Cliff or Sean that I knew? He wouldn't have let this fool in. I am dealing with disappointment in his, his inability to recognize trash. I'm also very angry that that fool lived in my mother's house that they built together, that they uh, paid for together. That makes me angry of all things. But I can't blame, he was a victim of a stupid head. And I hope that Cola gets every life sentence for everybody that he took their lives way too soon. I don't want I don't want to be angry but I think for the suddenness of it all and also recognizing that it's okay to be pissed off that my life has shifted and I'm going to have to adapt to these things. He's gone. I knew it was the call was going to come that I would have to come back for a funeral, but I did not know that it was going to be this sudden and that I was going to have to fucking pay for it. That's annoying. But dealing with the this and this person that took it upon himself to end my father's life, and I do understand that my father was ill, but Cola did not have the right to end his life. And he has to pay for that. I don't know if I'm going to get closure by going to that trial, which may actually extend uh, maybe to weeks or days because I ain't got that kind of time. I'm not going to burn up my uh, hard won time off for that fool's trial. But well, I will because I know he's going to be convicted because he has to be because he testified. He testified or admit it to all of his wrongdoings on camera right after he got caught. If you wanna watch it on YouTube, go and watch it for Channel 3 News uh, from Virginia, uh, post it on YouTube. I'm not even gonna share that link because this fool is crazy. This not crazy, like certifiable, criminally insane. He knew exactly what he was doing. It was premeditated. There is murder, robbery, arson, and fraud. 
And they need to also look at his extended family, including his greasy raccoon eye mother and his slick willy brother, uh, half brother, just saying. But what I will uh, read for you guys and end this episode um, with a victim impact statement, because the way I'm going to deal with this is figuring out how to formally express myself in words, put it into words, my feelings, and making no apologies for it. So here I go with my victim impact statement. Cola, you are a waste of air. I don't forgive you because my walk is still in progress. You robbed us, his actual children, his real family, grandchildren and great-grandchildren of the chill mellow shine. I always thought you and your raccoon, greasy-eyed, greasy mother were trash and not worth a second thought. You were a waste of space in my family's existence, a temporary... I hope, there you go, for a temporary reinstitution of the Virginia death penalty that would give me solace, but I know that's not possible. I only hope that every day of your pathetic life, you suffer by the hands of other bras on the yard. I hope the vision of my father, the restored and strong, handsome Clifton Robert Baxter tortures you and curses your dumb ass every minute, every hour of every day. I smile because this is the only time I am grateful my me and my family's tax dollars will be well spent keeping you in the clink for the rest of your natural life. Rot in hell, no regards, shines actual dark. I will be expressing my outrage not only of my father's death but other social shenanigans on my channel as far as 10 short. Don't forget to subscribe, leave comments, and I may actually read them out loud on upcoming episodes. That's some bull BS um, dance music, and I know my father would not um, like that because I know he was not into, probably wasn't into electronica, but when we actually sort through all of his thousands of vinyl records, um, I will, maybe I'll find out something different. I'm hoping to find the original pressing of Lenny Williams as well as original of Teddy Pendergrass and Al Green. Um, and just mellow, chill music that he would play back at the Jones Juke Joint or even at my grandmother's place back in retail. But this is how I'm dealing with my grief and trying to sort out and unpack um, unresolved or just resolved feelings. And I'm not ashamed of it all. I just have to acknowledge it and figure out how it's going to allow me to move forward because I know I can't mellow in this grief. Rest in power, Clifton Robert Baxter, my father, and the baddest DJ in Virginia Beach, known as Shine. And for everyone that is listening, again, and I just want to thank you for listening. <laughs>